Hi, this is Jason Graham with Tellius. Today we're going to look at the data set from the Gartner BI Bake Off in 2018 and some analysis using Tellius. Tellius is an AI-powered analytics platform, and these are some of the main features. On the top left pillar, we have the natural language search for ad hoc querying. This is complementary to dashboarding. This lets users ask questions much more naturally and faster on their data. We'll show some examples of this to ask questions about the data set on the fly. On the top right, we have the automated discovery of insights. This is something that lets users go one level deeper in the analysis of their data using machine learning behind the scenes to facilitate a much faster and deeper exploration of the data. On the bottom left, we have automated machine learning. This is the area of the platform where we let users build uh, custom machine learning models and operationalize them to predict things for the future. And all of this is built on a scalable data platform for analytics on small data all the way scaling up to large data. The data set for the Bake Off in 2018 contains information on drug overdose deaths, particularly relating to the opioid epidemic. We have information on overdose deaths over time, information about Medicare reimbursements of prescriptions and uh, units of drugs sold, and also information on prescribers of opioids so we can see uh, which types of doctors, for example, prescribe opioids more than others and in which states. In this analysis, we'll look at a few things. We'll start looking at what drives the opioid prescriptions in general. Um, where are the largest changes in the number of opioid prescriptions? For example, um, are there certain states where there was a large increase in the number of prescriptions? Um, when did that happen? Um, what are the main factors driving the change? We'll also look at which opioids are prescribed the most. For example, there's different types of uh, opioid drugs. Uh, there's different types of prescribers and they're prescribed over different time frames, so we can look at all of those factors. Next, we can also look at what drives the top overdose deaths. For example, we can see uh, the largest changes in the number of drug overdoses. Uh, for example, are there now a certain type of uh, opioids that are causing more deaths than there were last year? How much did that change? Um, do some automated discovery of those types of analyses. And then we'll jump into um, the demo next. Here we are in the Tellius platform. Let's take a look at the overdose count data. Here's the overdose data with one entry per month for each state, counting the number of overdoses that have happened uh, and the overdose cause. Uh, in a lot of tools, you might start some investigation of this data through a dashboard. It might look something like this, where I create different views, uh, charts and tables, and I can slice and dice, I can filter. Um, and I can ask questions and, and have a view that shows everything um, and I can filter as a result and maybe you'd show things like the overdose percentage, um, the number of overdoses by different type of uh, drug causes, uh, maybe look at that by state, look at that by year, um, maybe look at something like a time series. Um, so in Telus we have uh, the dashboarding obviously but we also have a lot of other ways you can investigate the data. Um, one really awesome way to look at data and get a feel for it is through the search interface. So I'll come back to the data set here and we can ask a couple of questions. Like for example, let's just show the total uh, number of deaths resulting from overdoses. And maybe let's break that down by state. So here Tellius provides a guided search interface. As I start typing, you'll see that recommendations pop up to help me along the way. Let's uh, look at this question. So here what happens is Tellius does a group by aggregation, just returns the results to the front end in the form of a bar chart for this simple question. Uh, and here we can see that New York has the largest number of overdose deaths uh, over this entire time period. We can also break this down further, let's say by state and drug type. So this is essentially two group buys, and we can see the results here in terms of uh, still a bar chart with an additional grouping. Um, so we, we can see now a breakdown for each state which type of drug caused the most overdoses. And it looks like, uh, you know, from here you can see that in most, in most states it looks like opioids are number one. One interesting thing we can do from here or from any search that we perform is click Discover Insights. With Discover Insights we can actually surface additional findings that you might not have known about. 
Here, for example, we can see that the number of deaths is automatically found to be highest in certain states. Uh, we can look at other things. Let's say, for example, um, we can automatically discover that opioids are the largest cause of overdose deaths. Other types of questions we can ask revolve around finding changes over time. So, for example, if we go back to our data set, we can see that there's one entry per uh, month. So we have a time series here of drug do overdoses over time. So one question we could ask is, um, where, where are the largest changes over time occurring? Um, so we have a couple of ways we can ask that question. One of them is using what we call trend-based insights, where you can just ask a question. For example, in this case, we might want to look at the total number of deaths. So we could sum up the number of deaths for each uh, month, um, and maybe over a certain time period. Like, for example, maybe. Uh, last year versus this year, or maybe some custom time range, um, like let's say January of 2016 versus January of 2017. If we like, we can make that question more specific even by adding a filter. Like for example, let's say we wanted to do some investigation just in a certain state. We could apply a filter for the state name and do some investigation only for that state. Here's some analysis that we've already run. Let me jump ahead and show you that. Here we ran one of these trend-based insight jobs for looking at the changes in the number of deaths between uh, January of 2016 and January of 2017. Here are some of the findings we found. Here, for example, we can find certain combinations of mostly states and drug types where there were large increases in the number of deaths. Uh, some of the largest increases were here, for example, in Maryland, we found that uh, opioid overdoses in Maryland are up 76% roughly between January of 2016 versus 17. Um, drug overdoses in Maryland from synthetic opioids are e even up higher, let's say almost, uh, let's say 217%, so an increase of 838 deaths uh, in 2017 versus that same time period in 2016. So this is a really good way to very quickly understand where things, things are changing over time uh, without doing a lot of manual analysis on breaking all these things down and looking at all the factors independently by yourself. Next, let's take a look at the Medicare data set. In this data set, we have information on Medicare reimbursements of drugs. Uh, we can also see the number of prescriptions that were uh, given out for a certain drug type uh, in all the states we have uh, over the last uh, two quarters in 2017. We can again search through this data set to get an idea of what's going on. Let's say we want to look at the total number of prescriptions. And uh, let's say break that down again by, let's say, state. So here we can see uh, the results in a bar chart showing the number of over of the number of prescriptions by state, and we find that let's say Ohio has the largest number of prescriptions, um, followed by uh, New York and Pennsylvania. Let's go ahead and run Discover Insights on this and see what we find. So some of the interesting discoveries we find are that uh, tablets are. Uh, prescribed overwhelmingly more often than any other unit type. And let's say uh, these are the labelers that are prescribed the most. From here we can also ask other things like in general which drugs are prescribed the most. One way we can do that is clicking on one of these bars and asking a question. For example we can drive uh, ask a question what drives this label type meaning who prescribes this the most or we can say um, of the people who prescribe this this uh, label what drives the top 10% of prescriptions in that category? Or we can ask our own question. For example, a question might be something like, let's say, number of prescriptions in the top 10%, for example. So let's say, um, what categories of drugs and, and prescribers and states uh, prescribe a certain type of drug the most? Here, let's ask that question. Here are the results of our uh, insight that we just asked, which opioids are prescribed the most. And here's some of the interesting insights we can find. Uh, for example, we can find that um, drugs other than oxycodone hydrochloride uh, prescribed uh, using this labeler name 
uh, in managed care units, these are prescribed 4.6 times more likely than all others. And if we scroll through here, we can find other cases. Let's say managed care units uh, with this certain labeler name prescribing oxycodone and acetaminophen. These are prescribed four and a half times more likely than all the others. If we'd like to train a custom machine learning model to make predictions for the future, we can also do that. There are a couple ways you can train models in Tellius. Let's take a look at AutoML, which automates a lot of the model selection process for us to predict the number of prescriptions. To do that, we specify the column that we'd like to predict for, number of prescriptions. Here, Tellius automatically identifies that this is a regression problem and suggests a type of model. This is, falls into the regression class of problems. There are several different evaluation metrics we can use to optimize for, and we can give a model name. Let's call it num of prescriptions. If I'd like to do some advanced configuration, I can also select things about the model training process in terms of the number of features that are used, uh, the hyperparameter optimization in, in the case of a grid search, and so on. In this case, uh, if we just click predict, Telius can automatically train a model, uh, several models in a grid search and return the best ones. Let's try that. Here's the output of the AutoML job. Here, for example, there are several different models that were trained and ranked in terms of the best performing on top. And for each of these models, we can see the performance in terms of several different metrics for regression tasks and uh, plots to describe the performance. Once I choose a model I like, I can save this to my model library and use it to make predictions. I can also do this as a part of a repeatable data flow pipeline where, for example, in this case, I have multiple data sets coming into the pipeline. There's some transformation stage, and then I join them together. And then finally, I have a machine learning training stage where I can actually train a model in a recurring basis. To recap, today we have looked at how Tellius can be used to analyze data from the opioid epidemic. Here I summarize a few of our key automated findings. Today we looked at how search can be used to investigate the causes of death and we found that opioids are the largest cause of death using the Discover Insights. Using trend-based insights we discovered that overdoses in Maryland due to opioids and synthetic opioids are growing at the fastest rate. Then we finally looked at Medicare reimbursement data to discover that in MCOU records drugs from Actavis are prescribed the most.